Hello everyone and welcome back to Coloring with Haley. This is the final part of my coloring book collection tour and this is everything else. So no Deborah Muller books, no Amazon printed books, no color by number. This is everything else that I own. It doesn't fit into any other category like that. And the first one is a Dover coloring book. I think this is the only Dover coloring book that I own. Um, it's the Dragon's Coloring Book by Christy Schaefer. And these silver coloring books are very, very cheap, but they are double-sided. And this one just features a bunch of different dragons, and it's got a bit of information at the bottom about each type of dragon pictured. And I've done one image in here in pencils many, many years ago, and it took me forever to do, and it hurt my hands quite a lot. But it did turn out uh, very nice. This was probably done with, I would say, polychromos, just by looking at it and how it feels. Yeah, I would say this is definitely done with polychromos. Next up, I have Mythographic Animals by Joseph Kattenbang. This is the only mythographic book that I have. Um, I decided they weren't really my thing. But I have colored a little bit in this animals one, so I decided to keep it. You guys are pretty familiar with these single-sided, very nice, heavyweight paper. Uh, they're kind of like a seek and find book. They've got hidden objects in each of the pictures, and I decided I don't really like that. If it was just the animal and all of the flowers, you know, that would be that'd be a lot nicer, in my opinion. Let me find some of the pages in here that I've done. All right, so I did this jellyfish. Also in pencil, this is back many years ago when I was trying to use pencil before I decided I can't, it hurts my hands too bad, it's not my thing, basically. And uh, all of the hidden objects were colored with metallic colored pencils, rather than glittery, so they're gonna kind of shine a little bit there, yeah. Because I don't really know what else to do with them, you know? I, I don't know, they're, they're awkward, I think. And I think there might have been a crab somewhere that I colored. Or maybe I decided not to call it a crab, I don't know. Yeah, I see here at the back it shows you like all of the hidden objects in each of the uh in each of the images, but I don't know, I just decided I prefer to have the picture itself. You're gonna hear me putting these books on the floor because this is kind of a big stack and I don't have anywhere else to put them. Next is Llewellyn's Witch's Coloring Book. This is a book I found at Barnes and Noble a couple of years ago. Uh and it features the art of several different artists. Let me get the names here. Elizabeth Alba, Kathleen Edwards, Jennifer Hewitson, Carolyn Vibert, Mickey Muller, and Wynn Sue. And uh, the artists are listed on the back of the picture. So this one here is Mickey Muller. There are a lot in this style here, uh, this kind of wood grave style, and those are by Kathleen Edwards. Then we have some more complicated images. These are by Elizabeth Alba. Then you have your images like this here that are kind of simple and they have the name of like a holiday or a season on them. And those are by Carolyn Vibert. Here's one I've done in pencil, one of the wood grain ones by Kathleen Edwards. There's nothing, there's a little bit of metallic. Yeah, there's just a little bit of metallic on like the little feet prints down there, but nothing super special on it. This is a book that I haven't worked in in a while. I don't know why, but it was one that I worked in a lot early on in, uh, pencils. This was probably Prismacolor. It, it definitely, yeah, it feels like Prismacolor. And then, let's see if I can find art by the Win Sue person. There we go. There's an example of their art right there. This is a nice book with a nice variety of pictures. This is the uh, Jennifer Hewitson. Yeah, lots of really, really nice pictures in this one. And I know I've colored more in here. Here we go. I've done this one, the two hands tied together. This was also definitely Prismacolor. And I know I've done one with some chickens, but let me find it. There they are. There are my chickens. It's, I've done all, a lot of these wood grain style ones. I guess I really liked that uh, type of image. It is single sided and it's on pretty decent paper, so. Definitely use markers, maybe even watercolor if you were careful. I used some metallic around this egg here because this egg was, it had like these lines around it, like, I don't know, it is this a special egg or something? 
So I used the gold metallic around that to make it stand out a little bit. But you can tell just by looking at it, kind of that's Prismacolor. When I hold it up to the light, you can kind of see the wax on the page and everything. And there's probably more. Yeah. Here's one I did in marker. Who is this one by? This is by the Win Sue person. I did this two-faced woman, I guess, with, or three-faced, it should be three-faced, wouldn't she, with markers, and I just, like, split her down the middle, cool colors, warm colors, and I think she turned out nice. Let's see what else I've done in here. That might be it, but I'm not so sure. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, this does have a nice variety of images in it and it is a nice coloring book. You can probably find it on Amazon, but I just had to happen to find it in person. This is Yuko Higuchi's Magical Coloring Museum. I bought this at um, Blick Art, so you can probably find it on Amazon. I believe it is a Japanese book, but because I bought this here at Blick in America, uh, it has been translated. And this cover does come right off, and you can see, there we go. I have not colored in this book, and I don't know if I ever will. I just really love this book. It's beautiful. It starts out with, like, this very thin type of tracing paper here. You can see, like, these kids can... S you can see the picture that's behind them, you know. It's a little, uh, creature. I think he's a cat. It says hello. And you can see the kids, and they've been turned into cats. It says, sis, you turned into a cat. You turn into a cat too and then it starts like the actual coloring book and it shows us different parts of the museum so this is like the flower part of the museum where they have plants and you can see the cats here looking at all the plants and uh, they kind of start you can see the little flowers growing out of their heads they start to like turn into plants here their little guide is a plant now too and they've got this mushroom telling them to come look at the mushrooms as they go on they sort of like turn into different animals. See how they're looking at birds and now they're turning into birds. This is a really neat book with some really, really neat artwork in it. And I just enjoy flipping through it and looking at the artwork. It's it's almost, it is a coloring book. That's what it's marketed as, but it's almost also like a picture book for children, I suppose. Uh, here we go. Let me go back a page because it should be a big iguana. Yeah, and they're alligators now because they've been looking at reptiles. Here they are looking at some fossil animals. I don't know, it's a really neat book and it ends again, I believe, with, yeah, some more of the tracing paper type pages. And then the artist includes um, some coloring samples from the book. So here's that big shoe belt from the page, colored in. Uh, this is how she colors, I guess, the little brother because it says handsome cat. And there's a couple more here, uh, and she says that she uses brushes made for travel, they come with a cap, so they're quite portable, so I would assume she's talking about water brushes. Let me grab one. Like this. I would assume that's what she's saying she uses them to uh, do these images. And that she likes using water-soluble color, water colored pencils. And here is another tracing paper page at the back. Super cute book. I probably will never color in it. Uh, I just enjoy having it for what it is. I had to pick it up when I saw it because it was weird and sort of right up my alley. This is Marvel's Color Your Own Women of Power. I haven't colored in it. Features scenes from the comics uh, with the women of all the Marvel comics. So there's Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel. Another Miss Marvel. Some of them are sideways. There we go. Just a whole bunch of characters. There's Gwenpool. So a bunch of different art styles since they are from different comics. It's Mary Jane Watson. So some of the art is a bit simpler, some of it's more complicated. Some of the pages are like from the original 60s and 70s runs of a uh, comic. Some of them are modern day. So the art in this really varies a lot. That, let me go back one. That's Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy. I can identify most of these. I'm not too familiar with a lot of the X-Men characters because I was never really a big reader of any of the X-Men comics. That's Black Widow. 
I'm familiar with more of the other ones. There's Spider Girl. This is a good one, though. And, uh, there's the back of it. I don't know if it lists all of the artists. Oh, oh, it does. Ooh, there we go. That big block of text there is all of the artists. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of different styles in there. All right. You're going to hear that? There we go. Okay, there are actually going to be a few color by number books in here, I think, because I found them and forgot to put them in my actual color by number collection. Uh, I forgot that I had some books stashed in a different location because these are too tall to sit on my shelf. This book is very, very tall. I'll show it next to a Jasmine husband Beckett Griffith book. It's a bit taller than it, and it's kind of a, a lot wider. It's a very weird dimension. Uh, but this is Colortronic Animals. Here's the first page, which wants to fall out already, and it is a color by number. As you can see, pretty big empty spaces, you got your colors here. Make some colorful animals. And I've done several pages in here, I know I have. Alright, here's the chameleon. I never do the background on these because a lot of the time they do want you to color the background, but it's one big solid color, and that would take up a lot of my marker to uh, do that, so I never do it. I leave them all white. Here's the panda. For example, the background for this panda was supposed to be sort of a mint green color. And can you imagine coloring all of that mint green? It would certainly eat up the majority of your marker. Here's a rooster. I've done one more maybe, or hmm, perhaps that's it. Aside from the rabbit at the front, yeah. Here is the, uh, the back that shows you sample of some of the animals. You can see that they have a yeah, solid background, but again, I just, I don't know, uses too much of my markers at once, and it looks fine with a white background. I have Jasmine Beckett Griffith's original book. This is the only book by her that I have, aside from the issue of Coloring Heaven that features some of her art. You guys know what her art looks like, and this book, of course, has quite nice thick paper in it. It is single-sided, so I could color it with my markers, though I never have. It intimidates me a lot. And uh, the back of these just have the names of um, the image that you're looking at. So, this is Alice in Snow White. This is Durga and the Tiger, you know. You guys are familiar with her artwork, though. She's quite a popular artist. This is my one and only hardback book, Fairy Miracles by Clara Markova, and I actually have some stuff over here that's meant to go inside of this book that um, came with it. Just a few little things here that she sent when I ordered the book, and one of them is a bookmark that uh, can be colored, and this one is like just like a thank you note. So if you order this book from her, you'll get this stuff in, but I cannot who She is not from the United States. She is from somewhere in Europe. I want to say maybe the Czech Republic? I don't know. There's, there, I know one of the very famous hardback book artists is from around that area. I think Hannah Carlson is from Sweden, right? Not certain. She's from a country other than the United States, so if you order these books from her, they will take a while to get to you and they will cost shipping. But I think some of them have been showing up on Amazon. And you guys are probably pretty familiar with her artwork. Very, very nice paper, of course. You know, this is like an artist quality book. But I haven't colored anything in it, because once again, it intimidates me. Uh, though this would be fine for markers because the pages, there's like a little space on the back where you can write what uh, utensils you used. Uh, utensils isn't the right word. Tools, I suppose. And there's like a little bit of a drawing back here. There's only several of them, so they'll be repeated multiple times. So it's not like an original artwork that you're erasing. And she does do this nice thing where she has double page spreads that they still aren't uh, double-sided. So that's really nice that she's done that for you. I didn't want to drop that one on the floor because it's a heavier book. Next up I have a Crayola book. I wish Crayola would do more books like this. Um, it's on nice paper, not the kids' paper. But it is sort of like images that 
I don't know, I guess you would expect to see in a kid's coloring book. They're not exactly complicated or anything. Here's what they look like. They're pets dressed up in clothing. Absolutely adore this book, and I, again, it's, it's pretty decent paper, and it is single-sided. I just wish Crayola would make more books like this. They released this one, and I don't know, they've done a lot of their Art with Edge books, you know, that for, are for adults, but this is not Art with Edge, it's just a Crayola book. There's no other branding on it or anything. Now I'd love to see more of this. I know I've done a page in here. There we go. I did a page for Valentine's Day. I did this Cupid bunny with markers, and it looks good, just solid colored with markers, because they are... You know, they are rather simple images. Like I said, I feel like these images could totally be in a kid's coloring book or an adult coloring book. Some of them go this way, knock my little bird. And again, I would love to see some of the, you know, like kids coloring books transformed into a book like this with nicer paper. You know, I'm willing to pay more for them uh, because they are on nicer paper. The kids coloring books are kind of on that newspaper quality type paper. You know what I'm talking about, the very thin stuff. Next up, I've got Nickelodeon's The Splat, coloring the 90s, and this features a lot of pictures from 90s TV shows. Here we have the Wild Thornberries. There are a few wallpapery pages in here, but I got this one at five below, and I remember talking in my haul video. Um, since I paid such a cheap price for it, I didn't mind that there were a few wallpapery pages. Here's Ah, Real Monsters, Two Angry Beavers. Ren and Stimpy, there's Rugrats, I know that. Let's see if I can find a Rugrats picture. I think there's one towards the front. Yeah, here's a Rugrats picture with all the babies. There's several Rugrats pictures. There's several pictures from each of the shows. That's Rocco's Modern Life, and that's Hey Arnold there. There's another Rugrats picture. There's quotes on each side. Um, so, for example, this Rugrats picture says, I haven't eaten since the last time I eaten, which would be quotes from the show. Ah, real monsters. There's cat, dog, rocket power. A bunch of the shows from the 90s that you might be familiar with. If you grew up with them like me, or maybe you watched them with your kids. No Spongebob, I don't think. I think they have a Spongebob specific coloring book. So no Spongebob in that one. This is one of the only Creative Haven books I own. I always get Creative Heaven and Creative Haven confused. They kind of named those very similar. This is Futuristic Worlds by Josh Carrington. It's a very unique book. As it says, it's futuristic worlds, and they kind of feature these alien and robot type people, single-sided, nice paper. Here is one of them. Here's another one. And a lot of, like, uh, technology. Kind of has a cyberpunk sci-fi type feel to it. It's very nice. I like the images in this a lot. And I've done the last page in here. This big alien person, and they have some glitter on the markings on them. I don't know if those are supposed to be tattoos or like just markings on the alien. I didn't know what these things were. This would look like big batteries or maybe towers, but I filled them with uh, different colors, almost like the big ink tanks or something. And I made the creature here in the center gray so as not to take away from all the rainbow. But here's some more examples of uh, some of the critters and creatures and such in here. Lovely book with super weird art and I don't think I've seen anything else from this artist, so Let's see here. All right, I've got some Walking Dead coloring books. I have the Rick Grimes coloring books. These are both art by Charlie Adler, uh, who is the primary artist for The Walking Dead, and it just features scenes from the comics, but I've got to be careful here because a lot of you don't want to see the gore that's featured. So let me try to find some pages that are, like, all right to show. Um... Here we go, this one features Rick and Michonne and Glenn after they escaped from the prison, so they're in the riot gear. Lots of black on these because that is how the comics are shaded, they are just in black and white. And I've talked a lot before about me being a big Walking Dead fan, so I own these to put on my shelf of Walking Dead memorabilia. I'm never going to color in these, but they certainly do have nice paper if you wanted to color in them. The other one is just The Walking Dead, it doesn't have a focus on Rick. It's just The Walking Dead. And let me find a nice one. Ooh, that's going to be difficult, isn't it? Um, there, that's Michonne and the Governor. Let's see if I can find another one that's not too bad. Yeah, there's some zombies with uh, Michonne and Carl. 
kind of give you an idea of what's in there. I have flipped through of those up if you are interested in seeing them specifically because like I said I know a lot of people don't want to see all of the gore. I have Vogue Goes Pop by Ian? It's not Ian, it's I-A-I-N-R Web. This is a double-sided book on very very nice paper uh, and it's just images from Vogue. This one here is from June 1963. It does, These are like real images from I, I would assume the Vogue magazines of their models wearing some of the outfits and it does give you a little blurb about them. This one's from October of 1967. Here you can see the blurb here telling us that this one's from March of 67. It's called Beardsley After a Fashion, and it uh, it does tell you what the outfit's made out of. It says it's dramatic silk shift, deep iris blue on a white, so you know, you could color that to look exactly like that, or you could color the outfits however you wanted. And at the back, it may show us uh, what these, no, it's the other Vogue book that shows us what these look like, doesn't it? This is a fun one, though. I think it would be good to use watercolor in if you were good at watercolor. Let me get the other Vogue one that I have. Okay, this is Vogue Colors A to Z, and it is the alphabet. So on one side is a letter, and on the other side is a cover from Vogue magazine. This is March of 29. B is from 1914, 1925. 1930. I did one in here with watercolor and it's pretty messy because I'm not very good with watercolor. I'd like to get better at watercolor and come back to these and do more in them. And this is the one that shows you. Yeah, all the covers at the end. There's the one I color. So if you wanted to try and match it to um, what the actual cover looks like, they have given you quite a big catalog to look at. Or of course you could color it however you want it worried that those are going to hit the camera, so we're going to start putting them somewhere else. Here are the other two color by number books that I forgot about. Uh, my Corkles books, they're definitely way too tall to fit on the shelf. You guys are probably familiar with these books. They are the circles that you color. You, it's color by number, but you pick your own colors. Uh, these circles are numbered one through five, five being the lightest, one being the darkest. This is the pop icons one, and once you color it in, it makes a picture. And I have done Kurt Cobain somewhere here towards the back. There he is. I did him in blues and purples, and these turn out spectacular. They look even better on camera than they do in person, but these are absolutely stunning. Of course, I have the animals one. I think there's one more. Masterpieces, I believe, is what it is. I've done a couple out of the animals one. The very first Corkles page I ever colored was in this animals one, and it is a horse, and I did it backwards. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Uh, yes, as you can see, I did the horse a bit backwards. Uh, it is a reverse horse. I thought one was supposed to be the lightest color and five was supposed to be the darkest. So there's my horse. I did redeem myself later. Here we go with this Cobra page. These look great when they're finished. Like I said, they do take a little while to finish. Uh, it is a bit meticulous, but oh well. They look so nice finished. I have the official Bob's Burger coloring book, which includes full color stickers. I like the TV show Bob's Burgers. This features scenes from the show and the characters. Here's Jean. It's double sided, but it is on nice paper. You could you couldn't use markers. I, I suppose you could if you were using. Here we go. It's Snakes of Village. If you were using um, watercolor markers, but I don't like to, so no alcohol markers in here. Or once again, you could use your watercolor. And I got a few pages like this, uh, just three or four where you can draw in the rest of the character if you want to. Not too many activity pages, very, very few. It's mostly just coloring pages. And if you're familiar with the show, you're going to recognize what these are from. You know, you'll probably recognize the episodes, because some of them do have the episodes there. Tina wrecks the car. That's one of my favorite episodes. You can make your burger of the day sign. And there are stickers at the very back. Yeah, they're there. Just a few at the very back. 
so you can put those in the book or wherever else. I told you I had the original pop manga coloring book. I just had to find it and for some reason it was with my color by numbers. Uh, Camilla de Erico's beautiful original book with all of her lovely artwork. I marked this page but I've never colored it. Again, double sided so you probably have to use pencils in here. And it's just not my thing. I just like Camilla's art. Um, these books seem like they are no longer printed. So if you're going to look for this book, I don't think this company, Just Add Color, is printing books anymore. But this is Just Add Color Day of the Dead by Sarah Walsh. They had like circus or carnival. Um, ooh, there's like a cottage one. Here's the back. It doesn't, yeah. Circus, folk art, mid-century modern animals with different artists. But again, I don't believe these are being made anymore. This one features some very nice Day of the Dead themed artwork. It was one of the earlier books that I bought. And I have done a page in here and it was somewhat with Prismacolors and somewhat with uh, the big marking markers. This sheet is in here to protect the wax from the Prismacolors from um, rubbing everywhere because you can see here that's Prismacolor there. If I hold it up, you can probably see yeah, the sheen from all the wax that I used on different parts here. I did this little bird with the skull tree. This is a very, very nice book. I need to pick it back up and color some more in it. Uh, it is perforated. I suppose if you were looking for this book, you would have to go to eBay to see if anyone has it secondhand. Or you could try to search and see if Sarah Walsh is selling her artwork anywhere else. I started on this picture, never finished it. Maybe she has, you know, started selling stuff on Etsy or something like that, so you will have to look for that one. Next is a book that I think everyone's seen. It's the Mouse Guard Coloring Book by David Peterson, and it's based on, again, a comic series, so there is a lot of black in here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, I like the Mouse Guard, so I have this book. Not colored in it. Kind of a theme with a lot of these books I've been showing today, a lot of them are double-sided, and I, I realize that I'm not a double-sided coloring book person. They just aren't for me. My single-sided books are better, you know, I can color more pages in them. But there are a bunch of lovely pages in here. Some of these are just nice to flip through and look at the artwork in them, you know. This one's great for that. All right. Next, I have Outside the Lines, created by Soros Hong Peretta, I would say is how you would pronounce this person's name. This has a lot of pages in it. I'm not sure if it says how many. No. It doesn't. It says more than a hundred at the front there. The, uh, the thing with this book is that each page is by a different artist. So there are all kinds of pages in here. This very first one is Keith Herring, and this may be the very first page I ever did in an adult coloring book. This was using Bix and Sharpies, and it is untitled, right? Yes, it gives the, uh, the name of the artist, the page, and uh, like the year that it was created, and some more information about where you can find the artist. So I've done this alphabet here. This is called A, B, C, D, E, F, G through Z by Deanne Shuick. I did this Make Art Not War by Shepard Fairey. It's called Mr. Spray. A lot of these are just going to be in Sharpies and Bix because it's one of the first books I ever bought. Uh, I enjoyed it because it had such a variety of images in it. I've done this exploded like picture here like you can tell it was supposed to be an artist painting a picture and then the, it's kind of been exploded it is called the artist at work in pieces by yogi proctor here is a work in progress of some houses here's an example of a blank one here's another one that i haven't colored um i've done this one this is called risk sketch by kelly gravel this one is a snake looking at some little fish here is a person like it kind of looks like they're in a shipwrecked ship. That one is by Mark Chef. I've done these mushroom people with the birds on their head. This is Forest Friends by Amy Ross. 
done another alphabet. There were quite a few alphabet images in here, and I liked doing them in the rainbow. This is New Alphabets by Kita Takahashi. Let's see what else we can find that I've colored. I've done this robot person. I tried to do this with, oh boy, something that I ended up throwing away that I didn't like. They were very, very scratchy. They weren't gel pens. They were some type of very cheap marker. This is For You and For Me by Ginny Yang. I've done quite a bit in here. This is, this just says, can we all get along? It has a bunch of smiley faces. It's Rodney King's Message by Ryan Junell. This is a retake on Noah's Ark. Uh, it's the animals on the Ark, but, and I, I, this person back here wearing sunglasses, so perhaps that's Noah, I don't know. But the Ark is on wheels. I thought that was just a fun one. This is called Untitled, aka Quit Your Belligerence and Hop In by Kelly D. Williams. I've done this kind of trippy page here with all of the melting stuff and these weird little animals. This is called Coloring Book Dan by Carol S. So I guess maybe that's Dan. Don't know. There are some in here that are quite complicated. Here's a grayscale image of a woman and some flowers. Just to show you again the variety of uh, pages in here. It sure has everything. This is Ice Bulb by Min Cha. Ice cream on a light bulb. This is this says Keep It Weird over here, and it's The Shaka by Justin Krittemeyer see. This is like a nice fashion style page. This is Girls by Adrian Nyman. This is a very simple one. I just did the crayons. You could have drawn something on the paper if you wanted to, but I'm not very good at drawing. It's Coloring Page by Max Rudenberger. Here is a tiger that uh, I did with black, and it's Tiger by Tyler Gibney. I've done this little alligator page here. He's like, I don't know, I guess giving a shower to this possum. He's got this kind of weird bee bird creature hanging out with him. This is a Gator's Gang by Sally O. I did this big sort of robot android alien creature in rainbow colors, and this was You Are Heaven Sent by Kinji Hirata. I did this fun kind of like pixel art style page. It's a hot dog like surfing on a soda with a bunch of little hot dogs and sodas in the background. And it's called Hot Dog Surf Party by Lacey Mikalev. This is the only, like, mandala-style page I've ever done and will ever do. It is The Puppies and the Flowers. I couldn't resist doing this one. And it is called Moody's Mood for Love by Son Kim. Let's see. Here's a page that's very, very detailed. It's a person's face. I can tell by looking at it, but it's all in pointillism, so that would take you quite a while to finish. I did this person skateboarding over the uh, scooter. This is called Ollie by Tobin Yelland. Let's see, let's see. I know that I've done more in here because I've done, oh, I see one. I've got this weird one here that's had big thick black lines and again, it's kind of psychedelic and it was Human Fly by Joseph Ari Ollie. I did this like pizza face to dog but he's also got apples and bananas and a cake on his face and this was pizza face by Ohara Hale I did this picture here which sort of looks like an old sailor's tattoo to me I enjoy how this one came out it's the merman on top of the uh, octopus and he's getting tattooed by the octopus actually the octopus is using like an electric eel to tattoo him and this was called East River Tattoo by Duke Riley I've done some here at the back somewhere. Here we go. I've done this one, which sort of looks like a piece of graffiti art. And it's called Brainology by Mambo. I did this sort of doodly page with all of these little people on it. This is called Underwhelmed Posse by Stephen Nesso. Yeah, there's just a big, big variety of art in here, and I know that I'm not done yet. I did this so much, I liked the look of this one because it looked like one of those kids coloring pages, you know, on the cheap newspaper. And this was called Rude by Yuri Shimenjo. And some of these are rather famous artists that you guys are gonna be familiar with. And some of them are artists that, you know, I've never heard of. Here's a work in progress of some cells. I did this page called Smooth Ride that features a bunch of different cars. It's called Smooth Ride by Katsuo Design. Let's see. 
that can't be it. Yeah. I did this big bird here with a button for a body. It's called Bird by Naomi Cosma. Here was another alphabet one. This one is kind of made up of uh, ramps, I suppose. And it's called Skate Ramp Alphabet by Steve McDonald. And then I did this one. This one was just sort of a pattern page. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. It doesn't exactly look like anything to me other than a pattern. I don't, I don't really see anything in it. I don't know. And it was called Rice Field Redo by Anthony Castro. I did this page here with the woman, and there's like these little things coming out of her head, the pyramid, the unicorn dog, the fish cake. And it's called Things I Think About Too Much by Claire Crespo. This is There is a Party in My Head and No One is Invited, and I believe that's probably the title of the page. Yep, by Dave J. Weisberg, or Weisberg. And let me see here at the back, yeah. Got some more here. I've done this one, which was sort of, again, like a graffiti page with some things hidden in it. And it's called Radio by Tess Arlo. I've done this woman playing the ukulele. This is called Instinct from Talent by Edwin Yushiro. I did red and blue here, and I gave them red hair and blue hair, these two kids. And this is Red and Blue by Dan Hards. I've done this one here, which is like a bunch of pictures drawn on paper. It's called Flat Summit by Jesse Ledoux. I've done these little ice cream creatures here. And I know this is by Buff Monster. Yeah, this is Friends by Buff Monster. That's a rather famous artist. Um, I did this page with these sorts of creatures. It's like a gorilla and an alligator and a dragon. This was Creatures by Terry Colon. Well, I'm good at guessing the names on these, aren't I? Here's a Hello Kitty page by Ico. And there's more. I've done this really nice sort of stained glass page with the person reading in the tree and this some more little people down here, a little turtle. Kind of everything has a face. This is called Storytime by Souther Salazar. This is a Gary Baseman picture. Gary Baseman is famous for Teacher's Pet on Nickelodeon. He animated that show, so he's quite a famous artist. And this is Dance of the Disciples. And I believe that might be the last page in here that I colored. And then the wonderful Soros Hong graced us with Outside the Lines too. And I haven't started anything in here. But it's the same thing. A whole bunch of different artists have given us pages to color. And there's everything in here. There's even a page in here by Tokidoki, and I believe it's the very last page. Or, mm, no, it's at the back. There we go. Here's one by Tokidoki. Yeah, just kind of everything, you know, a bunch of artists. Again, it's got to be over a hundred. Um, I'll look and see if it says. Those are the thank yous. This is the introduction. doesn't say on the introduction. It doesn't list all of the artists anywhere. It just sort of starts out. This one is uh, a page you can take out and you cut out these shapes and it tells you how to glue them together and it makes an elephant. There's another kind of trippy looking one. Here's a weird one. These two girls telling each other secrets. A volcano. Kind of a more pattern page. Love this one. The dogs on the swing. Floating islands. Again, it just has everything. So if you're looking for one book that has everything you wanted to color in it, then Outside the Lines and Outside the Lines 2 are really good examples. And that is it. That is the end of my coloring book collection. Yeah, six videos, I believe, and a ton of books. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this journey with me.